some examples would definitely be helpful now. But unfortunately, it's a little bit involved when you're in dimensions bigger than three. Things can get hairy pretty quickly. Let's try to do a few simple examples, just one or two, to see what happens when we start integrating forms in dimension higher than three. Let's take a look at an example where we're integrating a three form field in 4D. Consider omega given by quantity x3 minus x2 times dx1 wedge dx2 wedge dx4. We're going to integrate that over something three dimensional and that something is going to be a cube. A cube that is given in terms of x1, x2, and x3 going from zero to c and then x4 being the graph of this cube given by the function x4 equals x1 times x2 times x3. Now in x1, x2, x3 space, this looks like a cube, but if you include that x4 axis, then it's going to look sort of deformed. One of the corners is gonna be pulled up and the other is gonna be squashed down to zero. You're gonna to have to imagine that. That is really hard to represent visually. Okay, so given that, the question is, what do we do? How do we parametrize this? And what's the orientation? Well, the parametrization is going to fix an orientation for us, and a simple parametrization presents itself. We're going to use three parameters, t1, t2, t3, and simply map them to x1, x2, and x3, respectively. x4 is going to be given by the product, t1 times t2, times t3. Okay, we can take the derivative of that. That's going to have, what, three columns, the first being the partial with respect to t1, that is 1, 0, 0, t2, t3. The second is 0, 1, 0, t1, t3, and the third column being 0, 0, 1, t1, t2. Okay, now what we're going to do is integrate that three form omega over this cube, we're going to convert it to a triple integral over these parameters. Omega is what? x3 minus x2, that's t3 minus t2, times dx1 wedge dx2 wedge dx4. That eats the three vectors of the derivative and rips out the first row, 1, 0, 0, the second row, 0, 1, 0, and the third row, t2, t3, t1, t3, t1, t2. Then integrating that with respect to t1, t2, t3, we get the triple integral as those three variables go from zero to c of what? Well, fortunately, that three by three matrix is lower triangular. So the determinant is just the product of the diagonal elements. And we need to integrate quantity t3 minus t2 times t1, t2. Integrating first with respect to t1, we have a simple factor there that integrates to t1 squared over two, evaluate from zero to c, and you get c squared over two. Now we have to multiply that by the remaining double integral. If we integrate next with respect to t2, what do we get? We get two terms, the first one giving us a c squared over two times t3, the second one giving us minus c cubed over three. Now, all we have to do is integrate this with respect to t3 as t3 goes from zero to c. This, after a little bit of algebra, is going to give us two terms, c to the sixth over eight, and then negative c to the sixth over six. This simplifies to a final answer of minus c to the sixth over 12. Now that's that's not obvious. You can't look at this and say, oh yeah, clearly it's c to the sixth over 12, oh, with the minus sign. No, you really have to just follow the mechanics of this problem. You need to compute the derivative of a parametrization, plug it in, and integrate. All right, let's look at another example, this time where we're integrating a two-form field in 4D. Consider beta given by x2, x4, dx1 wedge dx3, plus x1, x3, dx2 wedge dx4. And we're going to integrate this two form over something, 
two-dimensional. This something is going to be something cool. A torus, given by the equations x1 squared plus x2 squared equals a squared, and x3 squared plus x4 squared equals b squared. Now this torus looks something like a donut in 4D. What does that mean? Well, let's unpack that a little bit. Those two equations correspond to two circles in the x1, x2 plane and in the x3, x4 plane. Those circles have radii a and b, respectively, and so you need to think about how those two come together and give you that torus in 4D. Okay, so with that in mind, what is the orientation? Well, let's fix that via a parametrization, an angular parametrization. Let's say g has as parameters theta and phi, and we're going to parametrize those two circles in the plane. We're going to let g of theta phi be a cosine theta, a sine theta, and b cosine phi, b sine phi, as theta and phi go from 0 to 2 pi. That's going to give us the x1, x2, x3, and x4 coordinates. Now the derivative is going to have two columns. The first, the partial with respect to theta, is minus a sine theta, a cosine theta, 0, 0. The second, the partials with respect to phi, are going to be 0, 0, minus b sine phi, and b cosine phi. Okay, now to integrate that two-form field, what do we do? We integrate as theta and phi go from 0 to 2 pi. We need to evaluate that two-form. So we have x2, which is a sine theta, x4, which is b sine phi, then dx1 wedge dx3. That's the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix given by the first and third rows of the derivative, minus a sine theta, 0, 0, minus b sine phi. Then x1, a cosine theta, times x3, b cosine phi, times dx2 wedge dx4. That's the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix given by a cosine theta, 0, 0, b cosine phi. Integrate all of that with respect to theta and phi, and what do we get? Now those determinants are easy to evaluate. We have to multiply a bunch of things together, but in the end, it's not so bad. What we need to integrate is a squared, b squared, sine squared theta, sine squared phi, plus a squared, b squared, cosine squared theta, cosine squared phi. We're integrating these sine squareds and cosine squareds over a full period from 0 to 2 pi. You may remember from single variable calculus that that gives you a pi for each such term. If not, go back, do that integral by hand, and you'll get a final answer of 2, a squared, b squared, pi squared.